In this video, you will understand how the Boeing 737 NG's auto throttle works using the PMDG 737 simulation. In the first part of this tutorial, you will understand the basics of the auto throttle operation, finishing this video with some examples to see how the autopilot and auto throttle work together. And before I get started, if you are new here, please consider to subscribe like and share to support the from startup to shutdown video productions let's dive in hello everyone in today's video i will discuss briefly the auto throttle system for the boeing 737 engines in this tutorial, we're gonna practice together to see how the auto throttle system works. But before I get there, let me first give you some tips that you may need to know before we start this practice. The auto throttle works in two different modes. In the first mode, it can set the thrust to N1 limit and keep it there regardless of what speed we want to achieve. This mode is called N1 mode. In the second mode, it can adjust the thrust continuously in order to chase the speed target. This mode is called the speed mode. So in N1 mode, thrust is constant unlike the speed mode where the thrust is variable. In N1 mode, speed can be controlled only by the pitch attitude. N1 mode is used for high thrust settings during takeoff, climb, continuous and go round. The N1 limit is computed by the FMC. If I press the N1 limit key on my CDU, this will open the N1 limit page. As you can see here, all the computed N1 limits for a different flight phases are shown here. Provided that the N1 set rotary selector is in auto, the N1 limit box position is managed automatically by the FMC. Just above the N1 indicators you can find the thrust mode display associated to the current N1 limit. For instance the bugs are set to climb N1 limit. Let's see now uh, with the different situations that I'm gonna simulate how the auto throttle works. I'm at takeoff position my auto throttle is armed and ready for takeoff. Now the way we engage the auto throttle for takeoff is by using the Tuga switch after stabilizing the N1s at approximately 40%. Now when I push the Tuga switch, the auto throttle engage and set the takeoff thrust automatically. This action is confirmed by the green N1 displayed on my auto throttle mode annunciator and the movement of the thrust levers by the servo motor. At 84 knots, N1 is replaced by thrust hold. Here the auto throttle is momentarily disengaged, allowing us to have a manual control on thrust when either the thrust is not set properly by the auto throttle, so we can readjust it manually or we can abort the takeoff by retarding the thrust lever to idle if something went wrong. During the initial climb, thrust hold mode will remain until we reach the 800 radio altitude, where thrust hold is replaced by arm annunciation showing that the auto throttle is back and ready to engage. Let's now suppose that the mode control panel MCP is inoperative and see how to operate the auto throttle manually. This will help us understand the basic of the auto throttle operation. Currently, I'm in initial climb. The after takeoff checklist is completed and I'm hand flying the aircraft using the CWS mode. Now, in order to continue the normal climb to my target altitude, first, to let the auto throttle set the climb thrust for me, I have to engage N1 using the N1 select switch. The green light bar illuminates to confirm the selection. 
auto throttle mode on my FMA shows N1 confirming that the N1 mode is engaged. Thrust is set to climb thrust box. Now I adjust my pitch attitude to control my climb speed which is currently 250. This is the way normally we fly the climb below 10,000 feet. Passing this altitude, I start accelerating toward the economic climb speed computed by the FMC, which is 330. Now I set this on my IS Mac window. And remember that we always control our speed with the pitch when N1 is engaged. So now I need to lower my pitch attitude gently to accelerate toward my new speed target. 80C has instructed me to hold altitude with 280 knots maximum speed until further notice. First I set my speed on the IS Mach window. 280 set. I select speed mode. The green light bar illuminates and I pitch slowly the airplane nose down to level of attitude. I glance at my auto throttle annunciator on my FMA to check that it's on speed mode and my speed is set as the speed bug is showing. Now the ATC has instructed me to cancel speed restriction and resume the climb to the cleared altitude. To obey this instruction, first I set my original climb speed which is 330, then I select N1, green light bar on, then gently with my pitch attitude I control my target speed and I glance at my FMA to check that the N1 thrust mode is engaged. Let's see another example. ATC has instructed me to reduce the climb rate to 1000 feet per minute for traffic separation. To obey this instruction, first I select speed mode, then I start lowering my pitch attitude down until my vertical speed indicator is pointing to 1000 tick mark. And I check on my FMA that the auto throttle is on speed mode. Currently I'm flying the cruise altitude at flight level 200. As you can see, uh, I'm currently using the speed mode. So the auto throttle is controlling my target speed. ATC has cleared me to start descend to 8,000 feet. First, I set my descent target altitude, 8,000 set. So again, I'm gonna do this without using the MCP assistance purposely to show you the basic of uh, the auto throttle operation. Now, normally we descend with thrust at idle. So first, I set the descent speed computed by the FMC. We can find this uh, on the descent page. Here it is, 330. I set this on my IS Mach display. Then I turn off the auto throttle arm switch. This allows me to uh, have a manual control on the thrust levers. Now, to initiate the descent simultaneously, I retard the thrust to idle and I lower the pitch down to control the descent speed. ATC now has instructed me to maintain descent rate at 1000 feet per minute for traffic separation until advised. To obey this instruction, first I arm the auto throttle. Speed mode is by default selected. I check now on my FMA that speed mode is engaged. Then gently I pitch up the nose until I get the vertical speed indicator pointing to 1000 thick mark.
Let's go back now to our mode control panel and see how the pitch modes affect the auto throttle modes. If we are in climb and N1 mode is engaged, selecting either the altitude hold or vertical speed will cause the auto throttle to change to speed mode, which is indicated by the green light bar on the speed push button and speed annunciation on the FMA auto throttle mode. Once speed mode is engaged, selecting either VNAV or level change pitch modes for climbing will cause the auto throttle to change to N1 mode, which is indicated by the green light bar on N1 push button and N1 annunciation on the auto throttle mode on the FMA. Once speed mode is engaged, selecting either VNAV or level change pitch modes for descending will cause a deselection of both N1 and speed modes accompanied with auto throttle retarding the thrust to idle, which is indicated by retard annunciation on the auto throttle mode on the FMA and the retarding action of the thrust levers by the servo motor as you can see here. Then when the thrust reaches the idle position, the auto throttle mode changes to arm. And this completes the auto throttle tutorial for the Boeing 737 NGs. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.